So over the last few months, I've had the opportunity to meet face-to-face -face with hundreds of fans of the channel. And by far, the most interesting theme at each of these meetups has been how much the desire to sleep with attractive women can secretly nest itself in the motivation behind everything that we do to improve ourselves. Now, I say secretly because what I've discovered is that most men are not only reluctant to admit this to others, they're reluctant to admit this to themselves. And this was certainly the case for me. When I started down this path of self-improvement over eight years ago and began taking an active interest in expanding my knowledge, developing unique skills, growing a business, and improving my physical appearance, to anyone who asked, I claimed that my motivations were solely rooted in achieving financial independence, maximizing my full potential, chasing my dreams, but if I was being really honest with myself, which I rarely was in the beginning, my true motivation was this. And I know that I'm not alone. So in this video, I'm gonna explain why sexual obsession tends to be such a dominant subconscious motivation behind everything that we do. I'll explain why we lie about it to others and to ourselves. And then finally, I'll show you what I did to turn this from a toxic obsession into a healthy one. Let's begin. Factor one, technology. Technology evolves at a much faster rate than our ability to adapt to it, which is why some of the most profitable corporations and industries in the world are those who use technology to hijack our biological instincts with what are called supernormal stimuli. Examples of supernormal stimuli are social media, which hijacks our instinct to seek social approval, video games, which hijack our instinct towards hunting and progression, fast food, which hijacks our instinct to consume calorie-rich foods, and then there's the mother of all supernormal stimuli, pornography, which hijacks our instinct towards reproduction, one of our strongest biological drives. So when we consider this, it's no wonder that men feel such overwhelming compulsions to consume porn, where we have instant, virtually infinite access to every type of mate we could ever hope to reproduce with. Now, porn is seen as a reward by the body, and so the more that we consume it, the more the neural pathways in our brain become wired to release dopamine to motivate us to consume more porn. It's an unhealthy obsession that tends to spill over into everything that we do. Factor two, women. There's this idea that men and women like to dress up just to look good, but this is merely a surface motivation. Spend just five minutes with an evolutionary biologist and you will understand that the desire to look good is rooted in much deeper evolutionary motivation to increase our sexual attractiveness. We feel this motivation even if we're just out with friends or at a business meeting because sexual attractiveness increases our standing within social groups which was critical to our survival in primitive times. Now, I hope this goes without saying, but what I'm about to talk about is not a critique of women who are playing the same game that we're playing, but women have a massive array of supernormal stimuli which they can use to artificially exaggerate their attraction. Let's go through a few of them quickly. Number one, blush and lipstick. The purpose of makeup is to be sexually provocative. The reason that red blush and lipstick are popular is because lips and cheeks turn red during sexual arousal. Two, eyeliner. Female eyes are larger in proportion to the size of their faces than a man's, so using eyeliner, which makes their eyes look even bigger, enhances their femininity, which increases attractiveness. Three, high heels. High heels cause women to take smaller and more frequent steps with more rotation at the hips, less bending of the knees, which increases femininity and increases attractiveness. Again, my point with all of this is simply to lay more foundation as to why sexual obsession is so prevalent among men. Virtually every woman who we encounter out in the wild <laughs> is at the very least using makeup, but more often than not, they're using multiple supernormal stimuli. Now, carry all of this into social media where you have the additional supernormal stimuli of filters, Photoshop enhancements, and algorithms which pre-select the most virally attractive women and place them at the top of our feeds. And is it any surprise that sexual obsession is so common when highly sexualized females make up such a large part of our conscious reality? Factor three, society. There's an old saying that sex sells, and while this is true, it is merely a surface observation. A truer statement would be to say that biological impulses sell. Let me explain. We exist in societies where profit is the highest goal, and as can easily be observed from advertisements, media, and social networks, our biological impulse towards sex is the one that is the most exploited for profit. This is why companies overwhelmingly use attractive models to promote their products via what's called aspirational marketing. The idea is the same whether it's a clothing brand, a car company, or even a gun manufacturer. 
that by purchasing their product or service will be just as attractive to females as the handsome models in their ads. Nowhere are these impulses more exploited than within what I like to call the success projection industry, which includes social media influencers, day traders, dating coaches, <laughs> virtually everyone selling a get rich quick online course, basically anyone whose personal success is directly tied to the image of success that they project to others. I like to joke that the image of success that these guys project is essentially just what poor people think that rich and successful people look like. And while exotic cars, Rolex watches, and lavish vacations are all important staples, attractive women are at the very top. Why we lie. So the reason that we lie to others and to ourselves about our sexually rooted motivations is because it makes us feel pathetic to admit them. In primitive times, men who were perceived as more fit to reproduce held higher standing within their tribes, which meant better access to resources and mates and overall a much higher chance of survival. Here in modern times, we are terrified to admit that we are not worthy of an attractive mate because our primitive brain is telling us that to admit low social standing is tantamount to admitting that we have a low chance of survival. At least that's my own highly educated theory. For anyone who's interested, I've linked all of the sources for this video in the description below. So now the question remains, once we identify these root obsessions and motivations, how can we then realign them to be healthy and beneficial? All right guys, so how do we fix all of this? Well. The first step is in understanding everything that I just laid out in this video. When you understand the rules of the game better than everyone you're competing against, which in this case is basically the entire male population, that is where you can start to bend the rules. To everyone else, this will seem like magic. To you, this will be blatantly obvious. Take your obsession for women and turn it into an obsession for becoming worthy of an ideal partner. Someone who is just as rational, loving, intellectually curious, and physically attractive as you are working to be. That's it. That's the secret. Play it back a few times if you need to, maybe even write it down. If you can understand that and begin to live that, you will understand what true power is in this lifetime.